Yes, pro-Palestine protesters have targeted a Conservative MP's family home, accusing him of being complicit in genocide. Dozens of activists stood outside Tobias Elwood's house in Dorset, brandishing flags, placards and a <coughs> megaphone. The former Defence Minister was at home with his children during the demonstrations, which ended when police activated Operation Bridger. Now, that is the security scheme to protect serving MPs. It's since emerged the ringleader behind the protest was the Labour candidate who unsuccessfully stood against Elwood at the last election. Corrie Drew held up a sign with a picture of the Conservative MP reading Tobias Elwood, you can't hide, you're complicit in genocide. An outraged Prime Minister condemned the aggressive mob in a tweet this afternoon stating that nothing is more important than protecting MPs' security and ensuring democratic values are upheld. This is absolutely appalling. Bear in mind, we have had two members of Parliament murdered in the line of their work Correct. in recent years. David Amos and Joe Cox. Uh, this must have been so frightening for Tobias Elwood. And for somebody who, this woman, who actually thinks that people are going to vote for her, uh, that, that she's the type of person that's so responsible that they will go, oh, yes, we'll go and, we'll go and vote for Corrie Drew because she basically went and, not just intimidated, you know, was threatening, had the police, you know, launch this operation. I think it's... Totally disgusting. It is, and, and, and certainly I've been involved in this. When I was an MEP, I had so many threats uh, under the same operation. They came round and they said, you need to have panic buttons, you need to have a panic room as well so you can escape if necessary. And the, and the point is really valid. Who would go into politics? Honestly. Yeah. Who would go into politics if that is the abuse you're going to get? Also, the other bit I don't understand is why is this not incitement to hatred, actually? Correct. And therefore, my understanding is it's illegal. Well, I would have thought it was... A, I mean, Curry Drew is not just a half-wit, but a dangerous one as well. And anyone that mobilises a campaign such as this... You know, we had a Tory MP resigning, uh, suggesting he's going to stand down at the next election because of these oh, kind yes, of... Mr Freer. Mr Freer, yeah, yeah. because of these kind of attacks. And you mentioned Joe Cox, and, you know, there are others as well, David Amos famously. Um, but actually what Curry Drew highlights is exactly the point I was making at the, in, in the last story is that contingent of people, you know, the UK is bad, America is bad, Israel is bad, all these medieval death cults in the Middle East, apparently they're really mm. good. Shemima Begin, she was good. 7-7, seven, seven, mm, kind of understandable. Batley Grammar School, teacher shouldn't have done it. You know, that kind of mentality. She is one of those. She's a hardened Corbynite. She actually did quite well against uh, Tobias. She, did, she yeah. got about 16,000 votes to his 24,000. It was a... In, in parliamentary terms, it was a reasonable second. But this is the kind of mentality that we're talking about, and that's what Keir Starmer ultimately is dealing with, and there are hundreds of Corrie Drews out there. But these, <coughs> these activists, it's as if they haven't listened to anything Tobias Elwood's ever said. He wrote a, right. uh, a piece last year in November saying, if we are true friends of Israel, we have to be able to point... <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> point out when they're failing. He yeah. said, it's no good our government putting empty platitudes saying peace in Gaza, but also giving Israel its right to defend itself. Mm -hmm. He has been critical of Israel. Yeah. If anything, they should be outside his house saying, thank you for yeah. supporting <laughs> us. It's completely bananas. Well, yeah. by complete coincidence, I actually rang Tobias Elwood yesterday just as this was all going on. I was ringing him about something else and then discovered that this whole thing was unfolding. And I don't actually think he was at the property at the time because I think he'd been warned to get out. That was my understanding. Um, and I have to say he was very calm about it. Um, obviously, you know, he is an ex-military you know, a military guy, so, you know, he's been out in very difficult trouble zones. He's not easily freaked out. But naturally, he was pretty unhappy mm -hmm. about the way that his family home had been targeted. And as you say, um, there is no justification. It's not, it's not based on anything. Mm. There, you could not possibly substantiate the claim yeah. that this former defence minister supports genocide. But, I mean, but, to me, there yeah. are other laws that may have been broken. Surely it's defamatory. But, 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 but actually... You know, I kind of don't care whether or not they had a point or no, they didn't no, have a no. point. Yeah. As, as, as in, if you want to lobby a member of parliament, there are plenty of ways of doing it. If you and want to go, if you to want to go it. and shout at him mm -hmm. or her, yeah. you are welcome to do it. That yeah. is part of our adversarial nature of our politics. You do not go to their private house, particularly as we keep saying, at a time where tensions are really, really high, yeah. when MPs are getting more death threats and and plausible death threats than they've ever had before, where you know people like. 
Ed Balls and, and George Osborne were asked you know, on their podcast last uh, a week or so ago, would you tell your kids to go into politics? And they both said no, no. because mm -hmm. it's so nasty now. It's scary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they would be safe. No, that's truly depressing. I, I think that's right. It's also become incredibly personal. Yeah, just in I terms agree of with that. The, the, yes. vitriol. the endless impugning of people's a motives. Absolutely. I mean, the truth is that the vast majority of politicians do not go in it for some kind of self-aggrandizement. It's not about in fact, they the do top, it, is it at a massive personal cost. But this yeah. this woman could have been an MP. I mean, there you go. I mean, yes, she which, is, which comes back to but my also point then of how you have civic responsibility, I think, and duty. And well, these you don't, they don't like not that. when you're absolutely bonkers and well, so absorbed with the, the, the rightness of your own position. Yeah. Um, but you can't when you're listen. in that place, yeah. you, you simply. So as far as she's concerned, she's punching. She's punching up, mm. and that's the problem. And the minute they start mm. to think that, they feel quite relaxed in their own skin about what they do. So this would be yeah. nothing to them. No, no, you're right. It's a sort of messianic... Correct. Mm. Correct, yeah.